YouTube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day, I'm going to slightly move you, wherever, oh. wherever it is you are, whatever it is you're doing, hello, it was all going so well, it was all going so well, and then Alan the Dehumidifier decided to uh, join in and start dehumidifying the room, and I was like, no, Alan, Alan, later, later, Alan, I said, sort my necklace out. Sort myself out. Hello, how are you? Slightly different angle today. You might be thinking, oh, that's a slightly different angle. That's a very interesting top of the chair. That's normally where I'm sat. However, there is a cat there. Hello. Am I boring you? Yes, he says you are. Can I show you the cat? Can I show you the cat without showing the books? I'm just about to show you. This is exciting. I actually have books. <laughs> I have books I have reading to discuss. Let's show you the cat. There he is. Ah. Oh. This is Indy the kitten. He's not a kitten, but he's known as Indy the kitten. There he is. And he likes to sit there. There we go. And I can show you my, can you see my Agatha Christie prints that I have? They do actually got, they've got a really nice evil under the sun in the same, um, in the same series. And I also have, bear with, an Agatha Christie calendar. <laughs> It's my Agatha Christie wall, really. We want to change this wallpaper. This is not our type of wallpaper. We're not entirely sure what kind of wallpaper we're going to go for, but we're going to change it. But it has to... And so I'll, they'll actually come off, but at the moment, that's what we have. But there we go. There we are. There we are. Settle down. Settle down. So we have a cat who's now gone back to sleep. Alan. Switched Alan the dehumidifier off. Uh, the dry soonish is doing its job. It's going to be... There's going to be some clothes that will be dry soonish. Um, it is actually sunny, but not warm. So I am tempted to hang up some stuff outside just for a freshen between you and I. Um, but that, that urge may pass. <laughs> but it, it seems like right at this moment, looking at the the bare whirly gig that's outside. I could do a bit of pegging out. And that might be a deeply lovely thing. Even if it's only for an hour or two, it would freshen those clothes. In particular, my tunics. So I am a pharmacy technician working at a couple of hospitals. Used to be one, now is two. It's all exciting. Uh, and I have to wear a uniform every day and I, I wear a tunic pharmacy green I say I say um and you know when you wear something every single day it can do with a freshen I don't think I need to go into any more detail about that yeah so the garden's actually looking quite nice we've got a few kind of like bulbs coming up I can see some dan I can see a few dandelions I can see quite a few daffodils we've got quite a few daffodils in the back garden got some crocuses coming up we've got the pond which quite frankly I do not look in at the moment when we first moved in which is about two, nearly two years ago we were like oh there's a lot of frog spawn gosh there's a lot of frog spawn in this pond which became tadpoles which then little frogs and off they went following you a bit of a shock when it came to March because it comes into a teenage young adult 18 to 30 party in that pool say no more I mean honestly you look out of the you innocently look out of the kitchen window and you're like oh my god my eyes my eyes I've had to go out and say to them knock it off lads come on you know give it a rest just five minutes just five minutes they're, they're all doing that and it's quite funny because when you go out they all kind of go Hoo! apart from some that are tussling, and um, they kind of get stuck. And it's like, well, just, just, not all the time. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's like a nature programme out there. It's quite, quite frightening, quite upsetting. I'm not keen on frogs. If it was me, I probably would get rid of the pond. Although I stood and watched a blackbird the other day, treating itself, treat yourself, Treating itself to the most magnificent wash. Oh, it was getting in there. It was doing its bit. Then Mrs Blackbird came over and obviously she was like, I can't. And he was like, no, 
my time, this is my time. <laughs> I'm having a moment, this is my time. She kind of waited a bit and then went off. I don't know what she wanted him to do. Then she came back and she kind of got in and had a little bit, but he was like, no, this is my time. We all need our time by ourselves and this is my time. It was lovely. I see a big pigeon at the moment. Love pigeons. Um, yeah, so that's that's the kind of what's been going on here. Other than that, not very exciting. Uh, it was very cold last night. Beautiful sunshine today, but chilly. And tonight is apparently supposed to be cold. I don't know whether we're getting any sleet. And then in the next couple of days, it's going to get nice and warm. It's very bizarre at the moment. Very bizarre. Can I just say to everybody that put comments about the Murdoch trial, we're just going to have to address it. I, I think we're all right. I think that was just, it was wonderful that everybody had exactly the same reaction that I did. We all felt the same. We all felt he was guilty as. They made the right decision. Some people were surprised they came back so quickly. I was. It was great. It was fabulous. I am still knee deep in watching videos and listening to podcasts. I'm actually going to leave a couple of good videos that I've watched. Um, if you're interested in watching a few more videos about it, then I've really enjoyed a couple of videos. Um, one of them's linked with a podcast, the other's not. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it all down below. So there'll be a little playlist of Alec Murdoch trial or Alec Murdoch videos available on uh, YouTube. So I'll put those out and just in case you want a little browse, you, like me, need a little bit more, that's absolutely fine. I still I still think there's so much to learn. I'm not so interested in the next big trial that they're all talking about. Is it the Doomsday? The Doomsday couple? Is that right? There is a vid there is a, a Netflix documentary about them, I think. So maybe I'll watch that and then I'll get into it, but I'm not sure. Not sure I'm with that one. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, I've got books to talk about. Let's talk about books. Let's talk about books, baby. Let's talk about books. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that we read. Let's talk about books. So, as we know, I had starting to read my first Mayo Marsh called A Man Lay Dead. And I read it on my Kindle and I finished it. My review is, I enjoyed it. It was not too long. It was a classic golden age mystery. I found uh, Inspector Allen, Roderick Allen, I kind of started to kind of have a bit of a crush on him. The only thing is some of the interactions are a little bit what he he kind of I don't know he's quite effusive in his language they all are a little bit I don't know whether it's her style Mayo's style I just I that I was a little bit surprised at the kind of um flowery endearments used and yeah that I was surprised at I thought uh, yeah so that was that was interesting nowhere near like for me as good as Agatha Christie however I enjoyed it so much I immediately started reading the second in the in that she wrote which is enter a murderer and I downloaded it on the old kindle oh by the way it was the person I thought it was how they did it, I would never have guessed, but I picked up some of the stuff that I, I did pick up some of the clues in the book. So I was kind of like patting myself on the back of that. Would I recommend? I would actually recommend it. I, it was a light hearted mystery, classic golden age. You know, it, I, it was a, an enjoyable read and that's all I needed. Enjoyable and quick. Perfect. Perfect. So I then picked up the second one, which was Enter a Murderer. So that's based at a theatre. The murder happens on the stage. Oh, it, it kind of tells you this very early on, so I'm not giving anything away. It's an interesting hairstyle I'm getting here. Um, yeah, so I started to read I started to read that, and I thought, you know, I am going to see if I can get a 
physical copy of it and it said on Amazon that I could get a physical copy of it. So I ordered it in, even though I was already reading it on the Kindle. I was like, oh, there it was waiting for me when I came home from work. I excitedly ripped it open and then was slightly bemused. So this is the style of book that I wanted. So this is the uh, 2000 edition by HarperCollins. And these are the, the kind of editions I was hoping to collect. As I say, I've got seven of them. It'd be lovely if I could get some more. I can't actually find it other than in a bind up at the moment. There is a hardback um, collection, but they're 13, 14 pounds ago, and I do not want that. So I think I paid about eight pounds, maybe nine pounds for this, and this was it. This is what came. Now, I was immediately surprised. It seems a lot thinner. It has a slightly different cover. So this is that kind of buttery cover. Whereas this one is the kind of shiny, slightly different colour. So this is matte, that's shiny. This feels more traditional. This is like not. It just isn't as clean and the type is almost, it's almost blurry. It's not, but it's almost and I thought, OK, OK, it's fine. It doesn't have anything on the back to say the price. Hmm. So I put it to one side and I showed the husband later and I was like, it's almost like a vanity press. It's, it's printed by Amazon. And he commented, it's not even straight at the back. And he was like, oh, I don't like the type. Oh, I don't like that. And I was like, I don't. And look, the size difference, it's just, it's almost like this is trying to be this. <laughs> this was a well-read copy. But it's not. And then I realised this has just been printed off by Amazon. This is, this is one of those, Amazon, it feels like a knockoff copy. That sounds awful, but it does. It feels like a vanity press or a knockoff copy. I just, I am just not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy that I've spent nearly eight pounds, nine pounds on a copy that I, in all honesty, thought I was getting this. And no point in when I was buying it did it say, oh, by the way, it's one that we print off ourselves. It's not as good. So the reason it's in this is it's going back. I'm going to download the returns thing. I'm going to send it back because, quite frankly... No, I'm going to just, the ones that are only available in a bind up or on Kindle, I am just going to get on the Kindle. I don't, I'm not keen on bind ups, as I was saying last time. One or two other people said they quite like bind ups or, you know, not too bothered by them. I'm just, I'm not. I like a nice book, single, single edition, not happy with that. So I will not be buying any more of those from Amazon. That's the end of that one. So I'm going to go and get them on the Kindle. So I finished Enter a Murderer. Uh, I had the same reaction. I, I was about three quarters of the way through, through when I thought, I think I know who the murderer is. It wasn't the most likely person. But it was almost... Was it signposted? I don't know. It was more complicated than the first novel, the first mystery. Um, yeah, there were some things that kind of left, that kind of were introduced and then left hanging a little bit, which was a bit of a, I was like, oh, that's a shame, because now I don't, I would like that kind of explored more. It was quick again. It was a classic, you know, mystery from the 1920s. So in that respect, it hit classic mystery, quick enjoyable again kind of slightly falling in love with Roderick Allen slightly I mean he's obviously a little bit more complex he seemed more complex in this one than he did in the first one again there were the flowery endearments that <laughs> I made me kind of go ah. um it had a character from the first book and the second book as well and he was kind of the reporter and I I liked the fact that there was continuity with the characters um yeah it's enough that I'm going to read definitely going to carry on with the series and, and and get the third one I'm going to hold off just a little bit but I'm definitely going to read the, the third one 
Yeah. What's enjoyable is just that they're just kind of easy reading for me at the moment, and I'm enjoying that. And they're get, getting into the quick pickup of a book and, and immersed into the story and then finished. You know, without any kind of complications. Who wants complications? There's enough complications. We don't need complications. So uh, went for a little browse at the, on Saturday into St Ives, had some, some things to buy and then um, exciting things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What exciting things are we buying, Louise? Do tell. I suppose some conditioner. Hmm. Yeah, that was, yeah, conditioner. Uh, what else? Oh, some body wash for the sun. Yeah, he nearly ran out of his body wash, and I'm actively encouraging washing. Uh, so that was good. And what he does with hair with conditioner, I don't. I mean, I use a lot. Yeah, and he has kind of a lot of hair too. So the, between the two of us, we can go through conditioner. So I got conditioner, and I got him some body wash. Uh did I get anything else? I'm not even sure I did get anything else. But then I wanted to have a little mooch to see if I could get some, you know, in the, the bookshop, the charity bookshops, because I hadn't been in for a while. I thought, wow. Well, see if they've got a little Naomi Marsh. No. Um, but they did have this. Jean Reese. Is it Reese? I think so. Wide Saragasso C. So this is... Jean Meese's late literary masterpiece, which was inspired by Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre and is set in the lush, beguiling landscape of Jamaica in the 1830s. So I've never read it. Never read it. So I'm going to give it a go. And I think it's about the wife, isn't it? It's about Rochester's wife. So I've never read it. I've always fancied it. It's a beautiful, I'm not sure, it's been read edition. I have no idea what the 49 is. Let's remove the 49. I don't know what that's about. It's an interesting cover, isn't it? It's a penguin modern classic edition, and that is an unbroken spine, and it doesn't feel like it's been particularly read. So that was a bargain. Uh, one pound twenty-five. One pound twenty-five. I was like, have that. And then I picked up another British Library crime classic, *The Murder of My Aunt* by Richard Hull. I know nothing about this. I'm not sure this is particularly one that I'm going to read, but I do collect these. This has been read because of the spine. Um, but that cover is gorgeous. Oh, it looks like the Lake District. No, it's the Welsh. It's a Welsh place. Wales, it says Wales. Um, Edward Powell lives with his aunt Mildred in the Welsh town of Llywel. His aunt thinks Llewell is an idyllic place to live, but Edward loathes the countryside and thinks the company even worse. In fact, Edward has decided to murder his aunt. A darkly humorous depiction of fraught family ties. The Murder of My Aunt was first published in 1934. Now, I'm not into particularly dark, humorous books. I'm not into humorous books, because I'm a very serious person. Um, so I'm especially not into dark, humorous books. But... For one pound or one pound twenty-five, I was like, that can come into my collection and look magnificent. So I've actually just I pulled out all my other British Library ones just to show you them because they are gorgeous. So I'll do the obligatory stack, and then I shall quickly go through them. Most of these I have found in charity shops. Look at that! So that's my current, my current selection. As I say, most of these I have found in charity shops. So there have been one or two that I have bought at full price or have been bought for me by the husband. Other than that, um, I have picked them up as I go along because I think a lot of people get, get them and then kind of don't do it. Don't. So this is the most recent one other than Murder of My Aunt. This is Somebody at the Door by Raymond Postgate. I love the covers. This is A Scream in Soho, which... I remember, so I think I might have read that one, but I might actually have read another one of his. Gorgeous, look at that cover. This is a bit crinkly. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of a crinkly one. Death on the Cherwell by Mavis Doral Hay. The husband brought me this one, so I remember that one. The Sussex Down Murder by John Bude. <gasps> White Cliffs of Dover. Now, I have, so Murder Underground by Mavis Doral Hay. 
So that work goes with those are my two Mavis Doral Hayes. Sussex Down Murder. I also have. Bear with. Cornish Coast Murder. By the same author, John Bude, who was a pseudonym for Ernest Elmore. He was the co-founder of the Crime Writers Association and worked in the theatre as a producer and director. He was a man of many talents. Calamity in Kent by John Rowland. I'm sure I have read that one. It was one ninety nine from Oxfam. I got that. Crimson Snow. Oh, that sounds... Look at that. I'm not going to read that at the moment. That's a winter mystery. Winter Mysteries. So it's a dozen vintage crime stories set in winter. Yeah, I'm not going to read read that at the moment. I'm also not going to read this at the moment. Mystery in White, which is a Christmas crime story. I should really... Oh, here's, is it the same author? No, it's not the same author. I thought it was the same author as um, A Scream in Soho, because it's got the picture at the back, but no. The horror on the train, though great it may turn out, it will be not compared to the horror that exists here in this house. Dramatic, isn't it? So that's kind of wintry reads. And then this is set in Cambridge, and the husband bought me this. The Incredible Crime, a Cambridge mystery. Now this is witty and entertaining. I think it's a spy, a drug smuggling ring. So yeah. Oh, Austin Lee, Lois, Austin Lee, was the great, great niece of Jane Austen. There you go. A lovely. I have walked over that bridge many a time. Very lovely. So yeah, so that is my collection of um, beautiful British crime classics. So yeah, that's my current collection. And I always, if I see them and I haven't got it, I always pick one up because I just think it would be lovely to have a, a good range of these. I'm not actually reading. I, I read a, a romance after Enter a Murderer. So I'm not actually reading anything at the moment and listening wise, I still haven't gone back to my audio book. I have started Moving Finger, The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie, Natch, because uh, that is the Read Christie 2023 book of the month. However, I have listened to it fairly recently, so I'm not fully invested in it at the moment. So I'm at that kind of stage where I'm looking around to see what I'm going to read and what kind of mood I'm in. Am I in crime? Am I in mystery? I think I'm in crime, not mystery. Mystery to me is golden age. Um, whereas crime, I tend to think is more modern. But yeah, that's it. That's it. Who knows where I'll go? Who knows where I'll go? You'll have to come back next week. There we are. There's a little cliffhanger for you to know what I'm going to read. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are. And here's my lovely stack of books that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you the no, disappointing Noah Marsh. I'll just show you these. There we go. This has been Lovely Booktube. Let's do this again. <laughs>